please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures. Romans chapter 15. Follow me along in the scriptures that we'll be looking at together today, you and I. Follow along, word by word, verse by verse. Please, don't just sit there. Romans chapter 15, verses 1 on verse 6. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Strong, strong in faith talking about being there for the babes, for the novices, those who have yet learned to uh, walk, let alone crawl. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. And notice in verse 1 it says, and not to please ourselves. And then in verse 2, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. We are not to get high-minded or stuck up in the fact that we are uh, stronger brethren or anything like that. No, but we are, remember, we are to condescend of men of low estate, to not be high-minded in our own conceits, like so many are, you know. They have the been there, done that mentality. Um, and they're above everybody, you know. Not willing to, uh, not willing to humble themselves and be with those of the lowly. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, written aforetime, that which is contained in the Old Testament, okay, were written for our learning. That we, Church of the Living God, through patience, hold on, hold on, we ain't done yet, and comfort of the Bible, no, of the scriptures, might have hope. Now the God of patience, Remember that our Lord is long-suffering unto the lost and patient to you and I of the church of the living God. <laughs> and, you know, we often, we, we wanted the redemption of the purchased possession to happen, what, a second ago, yesterday. But like I've told you before, do try to keep in mind those of yesterday that were not of the church of the living God that our Lord may have saved yesterday. Think of, uh, think of it also in this light. What would have happened if the Lord had already redeemed his purchased possession before he saved you? Yeah, that would have been quite a uh, pickle, wouldn't it have been, right? Now the God of patience and consolation Grant you to be like-minded one towards another, according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind, the mind of Christ, because we have Christ living within us, and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, speaking of that, very quickly, a little rabbit trail. This this uh, video will be laced with some rabbits, so get the teriyaki sauce or the hot sauce, whatever you prefer. Okay. Um, I'd like to see some of you, brethren, sing a hymn. Put it on YouTube. Um, our brother, our dear brother Sasha, uh, his channel is uh, a joyful noise, not his main channel. But he has started um, uploading hymns, and um, he uses a stringed instrument, and he, he's very good with that. He's very good with that. Uh, 
check him out. If I can remember, um, I will put the link for his uh, channel in the description box. But if I forget, check out the playlist from uh, about that uh, Hymns from the Brethren. And of course, Brother Alexander Hartley, who is a beautiful singer of songs and hymns. I'd like to see some of you brethren sing a hymn. Sing a hymn. You know, if you got to, you know, hide your face so the camera looks at the wall or whatever, sing a hymn. Upload a hymn once. Why not, right? Why not? But that's that's it for the <laughs> that's it for the rabbit trail on that one. But anyway. Verse six again. That ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to glorify God. Being like-minded, having one voice, singing praise unto the Lord. But we also got to remember verse 4, like we've talked about, okay? For whatsoever things were written aforetime in the Old Testament were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. There are those out there who totally neglect the reading of the Old Testament. And there are those out there who will read the Old Testament, but, well, you got to remember dispensationally, and it, this is true, doctrinally, a lot of the Old Testament does not apply for us today doctrinally. But, you know, dear brother, dear sister, a friend and foe, unless you got your head implanted firmly betwixt your buttocks, um, we really need, right now, patience and comfort of the scriptures. We really do right now. Especially in these, the last days. So close unto the redemption of the purchased possession. We really do need it. We need to know, we need to be reminded to finish the course that is set before us, that race. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Wow. Wow. I opened right to it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Or, or did I? No. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 1 on to verse 12. Now, you got to remember, dispensationally, doctrinally, a lot that we read in the Old Testament doctrinally is not for us. It is written in a dispensation where eternal security is not there. Where being right with God is predicated upon faith and works. That God would honor what you do towards him to be right. What he will do. Okay? We've talked about this before. Whereas today it is what he has done. Okay? In the Old Testament, under the law, you had to have faith on God that God would honor your blood sacrifice to cover your sin. Okay? To do what was right in his eyes. Today, we have faith in what God has done, not what he will do. Okay? That's the difference about that. And you got to remember also, dear brother, dear sister, what makes a dispensation? How a man is made right in the eyes of the Lord. That is what makes a dispensation. Okay? Which is totally contrary to these easy believers and devils who claim to be dispensational, but they are not. Okay? They are not. <laughs> what makes a dispensation is how man is made right with God. Okay? You could say the method or mode of salvation. You could say that. But rather, how man is made right with God is what defines a dispensation. Do not forget that. Okay? Uh, was uh, give you an example. The very first dispensation of Scripture, the Garden of Eden, it was only works. The one after that, similar to this time, but different in that the perfect sacrifice for sin, obviously, had not been made yet. And the faith was in what God will do. Okay? Will do. All right? And the law was not during the time of the patriarchs. Okay? Okay? The second dispensation, the time of the patriarchs, was similar to ours, but yet different. 
Then the third dispensation, the dispensation of the law, okay? That was faith and works, all right? And during the time of the patriarchs, okay, an example, uh, during Noah's time, the way man was made right in the eyes of the Lord did not differ with the flood, okay? Because I know some people out there want to say, well, the uh, Noah's flood, that in itself is a dispensation. God was dispensing grace, but as far as how man was made right, no, 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 okay? You got to watch out for these people, brethren, who call themselves dispensational. And when they speak, they hardly are dispensational at all. And you could tell because it's from faith alone, from, Gen from Genesis on to Revelation, and we've talked about that at length, okay? But when it comes to these matters... We, especially right now, you cannot disregard something merely on the fact that doctrinally it does not apply to us, but rather more so that it is for our instruction in righteousness today. Because, like I said, unless you've got your head firmly implanted betwixt your buttocks, we need encouragement, edification on how to finish on how to finish. So with that, let's continue in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 out of verse 12. Paul, the apostle of us Gentiles, writing unto the church of the living God, the church of God, the Gentiles in, um, Corinth, in Corinth, okay? 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 on to verse 12. Moreover, brethren, he's addressing saved people, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers, making a reference unto who? His, he, Paul was a Jew, a Hebrew. Our fathers, talking about his kindred, okay? Were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized onto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Baptized in the context because you do not read about a dunking similar that you see today within the Old Testament. So baptized in this context right here is what? An identification. Okay? And were all baptized onto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meats. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock. And if you are using the facsimile copy, capital R with the E on the end, gotta love that. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Not a little stone. Peter. No, that rock was Christ. Okay? Okay. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. Now see, Paul is illustrating instruction and righteousness for you right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, okay? By referencing the Old Testament. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. To the intent, we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. See, he is illustrating instruction and righteousness for us right here, okay? Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and to drink, with an E, <laughs> and rose up to play. Idolaters. Now, talked about in verse 6 about to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted, neither be idolaters. <laughs> you got to remember, brethren, it's a defensive measure when you got somebody who wants to right away say, idolatry is just the worship of a statue. Yeah, okay. Like the golden statue of that you've made yourself, huh? Yeah. And see, 
In these last days, Satan, through his church, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit order, are just turning up the dial to make you idolatrous. Why? Take everything away. What's that saying? You don't know what you got until it's gone, right? So take things away from people so that they will covet the wrong things. See, that's why you need to get saved, okay? Because when you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus, <laughs> there ain't no one going to take the Lord away from you. Ain't nothing going to separate you from the love of God if you're saved, if you come to him on his terms, okay? But see, what they're, what they're doing, taking everything away from you so that you, can, that you concentrate on the worldly and not the things that are heavenly, okay? Incidentally, brother, I see your phone call. You know what I was doing. I'm sorry, okay? Let's continue. Verse 7. Oh, uh, verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Fornication. He who is a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Love not the world or the things of the world. Are you committed committing fornication with the world? Isn't it, isn't it interesting with all the things that the Jesuits are instilling on people and people are falling for? A lot of eyes want to see us. How are we going to react? What are we going to do? Hmm? How are we doing, brethren? Neither, and here's, here's a big one. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. And in the previous video, we saw that the serpent was made to go on his belly and eat and that the dust would be his meat. And remember, you and I, we were made of dust. Okay? Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents, ministers of Satan. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Murmur. Quit your whining. Quit your complaining. Oh, brethren. <laughs> and this for you lost people. You, Sorry. This is for the church of the living God. Brother, sister. You ought to know by now how our Lord feels about whining. About complaining. Got to watch out for that murmuring stuff there, boy. <laughs> I, yes, uh, remember what Paul said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Got to watch out for murmuring, especially at this time. Okay? Remember, you're be we're being watched. Okay? The enemy will do things to us just to see how we will react. Okay? Got to remember this, brethren. Verse 11, now all these things happened unto them for ensamples. I love it, that word ensamples with an N. And they are written for our admonition. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Don't be so sure of yourself. Be sure of our Lord Jesus Christ and what is written in the scriptures. Yes. But the minute you start thinking too surely of yourself, boy, oh, <laughs> look here online about people who are really sure of themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Charlatan. <laughs> and... Notice, now we're going to read verse 13 in verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but, with, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape 
that ye may be able to bear it. And verse 14, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. And isn't it interesting that right now, outside the door, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the religion of idolatry, Satan's church, Roman Catholicism, is all bent on making so many people idolaters. I idolaters of their stuff. Idolaters of their own hearts. Idolaters of men. And the traditions of men. <laughs> Which at this time is a very, very important thing to defend the traditions of men. Uh, yeah, 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 charlatan. Uh, never mind, never mind, okay? But now let's look in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 and verse 27 by the quest page. How are we going to finish? How are we going to finish? I mean, you look around right now, you see people getting diverted because of worldly things. When we're supposed to keep our ears open and our eyes upon Jesus Christ. But what is Satan and his church doing right now with his media? Hmm? We're supposed to have our eyes upon Jesus. But see, them winds, boy. Them winds is getting pretty boisterous, ain't it? Ain't it? Brethren, verses 24 and verse 27 in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run, that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they, those of the world, do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. They do it for, they, they do their things to be seen of men, okay? Like the Pharisees, okay? And these Christians, these Christians in the buildings, these Christians here online, they do things to be seen of men. Why? Because they have men's persons in admiration because of advantage. So they're going to speak to you things that, you know, make you feel good. All the while avoiding the things of the truth. All the while touching your let's feel good bones. Where did he get that money from you? Yeah. Yeah. But we are to run that we may obtain. They, you know, you know these guys who are only in it for the do re me, for the praises of men? Okay? <laughs> they, they, they have their reward. They have their reward. Ours is not yet. Not yet. And our crown is not going to perish, unlike theirs. Because in the uh, court of public opinion, you can go up and then you can come down real quick, boy. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, because these things have I written, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. That's in First John chapter 5. Go find it. Okay? I therefore so run, not as uncertainly so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, shadow boxing, okay? But I keep under my body, mortify. You know, keep your body down, keep that flesh down, okay? And bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway by being a hypocrite and going against the very things that you preach against. You know, not walking your talk, that kind of thing. Okay? And Hebrews chapter 12. Now you got to remember about the book of Hebrews, brethren. Yes, the book of Hebrews is written to the <laughs> Hebrews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes, but that does not mean that we neglect it for instruction and righteousness sake. You, you, you really got to be careful with that sometimes, brethren. Um, yes, doctrinally, 
specific doctrine for us today is in the Pauline epistles. But again, we need instruction and righteousness on how to finish right. Okay? Doctrine is important. Doctrine is very important. But how are we going to finish? How are we going to finish, brethren? Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, just verses 1 and 2. Now remember, this is written for a different dispensation. Okay? The book of Hebrews. This is written for the Hebrews during the time of Jacob's trouble. A different dispensation than the one we have presently. So there are dispensational doctrinal differences there. Yes, but for our instruction in righteousness. Instruction to teach. Okay? As a way and means as to perform or to do. To teach. To instruct. To make wise. Righteousness. Being right. According to who? According to your standard? Or according to the Lord. See. Okay. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 on verse 2. Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. And right there. See there's a dispensational difference right there. Okay. A lot of people today. You know the cloud of witnesses. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yes we do have a cloud of witnesses. Yes. Yes. Yes we do. But uh, you got to remember. The cloud of witnesses for this during the time of Jacob's trouble. Here's your cloud of witnesses right here. Because <laughs> remember, the Jews, for what the time of Jacob's trouble is there for, okay, they are not about the scriptures. Oh yes, they have, you know, the Old Testament, the Torah and stuff like that. But you got to remember, Judaism today is Talmudic, Kabbalistic. It is not scriptural Judaism because as several of our brethren who are of the Church of the Living God who are Jews, Hebrews, they will be the first to tell you that yes, the Church of the Living God is completed Judaism. Okay? Not just another flavor of it. It is the completion of Judaism. Okay? So, beg your pardon. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience unto the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The finisher of our faith. The finisher. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, during the time of Jacob's trouble, that seven year period, uh, a Jew who, come, who realizes it's like, oh wow, the Church of the Living God, God guys, they were telling us the truth all along. Did, yeah, despising the shame, mentioning the cross, which is death, okay? Yeah, they have to, during the time of Jacob's trouble, they have to endure to the end to be saved. Matthew chapter 24 is about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, they have to endure to the end to be saved. Today, you and I, the church of the living God, we don't have to endure to the end to be saved of anything because it's not our salvation. It is a gift given unto us, see? Okay? But there again, looking at verse 2, don't look at me. Come on, don't mess around. Looking unto Jesus, the author, okay? We are declared righteous by what? His death, burial, and resurrection. And the blood that he shed on the cross. And us coming to him on his terms, not our own. You know, you're one of these fools who like to boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. You lost your devil working for the Vatican. You're going to hell. Okay? Okay? But he is the author of our faith. And the finisher. The finisher. Go to 2 Timothy now. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 on to close of the chapter. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. Begins with doctrine. Begins with doctrine. The author. Okay? Manner of life. Purpose, faith, long-suffering, 
Charity, which is self-sacrifice and patience. The end of the road. Persecutions. Because all who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions. Mm -hmm. And just because you might not get the persecution online, oh, that must mean you're not a Christian, right? Blow that your nose, okay? <laughs> there are persecution, you walk outside your door, okay? Give me a break. Hmm. Persecutions, afflictions, which came on to me at Antioch. Antioch, where they were first called, where they were first called, not where we first called ourselves, no, where they were first called Christians. Don't worry, I'm not going to get off on that. Okay. At Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. <laughs> Yea, and all that will live godly, separate. In Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers, oh yeah, yeah, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Hmm. You know, last year, 2021, was an extraordinary year. Many people were made manifest of what kind of metal they truly were. What do you think 2022 is going to be like, man? You watch. Those who you think are of us because of the lust of the praises of men, because of the lust of worldly things, They will betray you. They will betray you. Why? They claim they have their eyes on Jesus. But no, no. They have their eyes on worldly things, on men. Praises of men. Worship of men. And the traditions of men. You watch. You watch. The falling away has been happening for <laughs> centuries. This close, you watch. You watch. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Who have you learned them from? Hmm? Now, you're going to say a man? God uses men, absolutely, but you're of the church of the living God? Who's, who's, who's teaching you? Who are you learning from? Our Lord says to learn of me. And yes, he is that spirit of truth who will guide you into all truth. And he will teach you things that are to come, yes. But who are you learning these things from? Yes, God uses men. Amen, he does. Absolutely. He has, says, he has said it so. But if you're going to value a man above the word of God, a man who will die just like you and I, you got some problems there, pal. You got some problems there. And if you're willing to call people lost because they don't like your favorite hero... But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Verse 
Verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Yes, Timothy, his grandmother and mother taught him in the Scriptures. Bring up a child in the way he shall go, in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay? And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. That's why, again, why uh, Paul said, let no man despise thy youth. Okay? Because Timothy was brought up in the Scriptures. Okay? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture. All of it. Not just the Pauline epistles. Okay? Okay? Pauline epistles is for us today, yes, doctrinally, yes, yes, amen, absolutely. But you can't neglect the Old Testament, okay? Be careful. Be warned of doing so, okay? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. And the first thing mentioned is for doctrine. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, amen doctrine within the Pauline epistles written specifically for us today in this dispensation. Okay? To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? For reproof, for correction, and lastly, for instruction in righteousness. Lastly, instruction in righteousness. How are we going to finish, boy? How are we going to finish this race that is set before us? Hmm? <laughs> you you did you you began well who hath hindered you that ye should not obey the truth who what verse 17 that the man of God may be perfect here in hot Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Yeah. And also, let's look at 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Verses 12 on to verse 21. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them. Though you know them, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put, to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Like I said, unless you got your head firmly planted betwixt your buttocks and can't see what's going on and figure out, you know, that <laughs> how are we going to finish? How are you going to finish? Hmm? Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to strive to stir you up by putting you in remembrance knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shewed me. His time is coming up. And interesting, Peter is talking about his decease. Um, he doesn't make one mention about being in Rome. <laughs> knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shewed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. How easy is it for you to forget when you are distracted about trivial things? For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory, 
when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. Wait, 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 wait. Big part. Yes, let's read that again. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We had, uh, was that where we were supposed to read to, by the way? Oh, uh, no, to the end of the chapter. Excuse me. <laughs> we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this, First, that no prophecy of the Bible, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. You want to know the deeper teaching of this? Give me your money, huh? Yeah. Oh, no, you know, the Jesuit, the dog collar. You, you, you need, that's an advanced course. You got to take that or you, you, you got to go to a priest so he can explain it to you. Yeah. Knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit. Now, did we skip over? I think we did. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 8. How are we going to finish, brethren? How are you and I going to finish? 1 Timothy chapter 4, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 8. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, and the dead, quick, right there, is alive. Thank you, Brother Sasha. At his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Be ready. Be ready. Because you, you, you never know what kind of circumstance, whoa, that the Lord is going to orchestrate. Okay? Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Doctrine, yes. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Oh, well, I've already spoke about that stuff, so I'm going to go off in another direction now. Uh, itch people's ears to make them feel good about certain things so they get more money from them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happening today, brethren. <laughs> These Christians up there. Right now. God loves you! He loved you. <laughs> and he died on a cross to make an atonement for your sins. Are you going to go to him on his terms? Oh, his terms are way too hard for you. Yeah, so boot the door out the way and climb up some other way, huh? Yeah, yeah. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be turned on to fables. Yeah. Fables. That are not based on scripture. But watch thou. In all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. And in verse 2. We are told to be instant in season, out of season. 
You know, one of the things I always uh, promote and tell you of the Church of the Living God, you know, brother, sister, I, I don't give a rat's rear end if you're going out to the mailbox or taking out the trash. Always, always go out armed. <laughs> I'm not talking with a, a pistola. I mean, that time's coming, obviously. But, uh, I mean, leave your house with a set of scriptures. Okay? Like I've told you before, I was in that situation once, once, where the Lord had orchestrated something, and I went unarmed without the scriptures, and the moment was lost. I have never again made that mistake. I, I, I don't care if I'm going out to my mailbox. Have the scriptures. When you leave your house, have the scriptures. Always. Put them in your pocket. If you're a sister, put it in your purse. Well, I got a big one too big of a scripture. So what? So what? Never leave your house unarmed. Never. Never. Because I'll tell you, it's a humbling, humiliating, and almost debilitating thing to know that a situation was passed, was blown, because you were not instant in season and out of season. I spare you that. You never know. You never know. Verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto them also that love is appearing. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Our, co our course is almost finished, brethren. Have you fought a good fight? Have you fought a good fight? Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And at the time of these end, of this end, see, Moses in type signified the Old Testament because Moses died before the children of Israel went into the promised land, the death of the testator, okay? And the death of the testator brought in the New Testament, okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul being ready to be offered, we, the church of the living God, we're going to be offered, we're going to be taken out. And then brings in the time of Jacob's trouble once we're out of here. Okay. When we're seeing our end on the horizon, what, next year, next decade, or whatever, we do not know. All you and I can do is say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Might be sitting there in a hospital. But yet, isn't it, isn't it amazing how the Lord has used you, brother, sitting there in the hospital like that? You know to whom I'm speaking. You know who you are if you see this. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it beautiful how the Lord has used you even in the condition that you are in right now? How your brothers have been there for you? You for once, sir. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And that's, brethren, that's, that's it. That's it. I mean, people arguing of the church of the living God, okay, who are supposed to have one mind and one mouth, but yet, 
button heads over men and the traditions of men and over worldly carnal things. I have seen pettiness to be taken to a whole new level. Is this how we're going to finish? Bickering? And, and these scumbag devils, they're laughing all the way to hell. <laughs> Look at what we've been instilled in these people. They're just like us, bickering back and forth, accusing and condemning people. Yeah, they're just like us. King James Bible believing Christians. You can keep your stigma. And go wipe yourself with it. Okay? How are you going to finish? Tough guy. Go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. That's XX11. <laughs> Luke chapter 22. What's going on right now? Okay, we got to keep our eyes on Jesus. How are we going to finish this? Now remember, the author and finisher of our faith is Jesus Christ, yes. But again, he's not forcing us at gunpoint to do things, is he? Neither is Satan. Are you going to do what's right? Or are you going to justify sin? Because remember, now, this is why I stretch you righteousness, okay? <laughs> Luke chapter 22, first, verses 31 and 32. Note who this means said to. And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift, or in this, fift, <laughs> sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now, before the death, burial, and resurrection, Peter was not a saved man. He was not converted. Yes, the sacrifice for our sins have not been made yet. Yes, we know. Bravo. Okay? Point is, verse 31. And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Sifting. Have you, have you ever um, put flour into a sifter, you know? bang it and it comes out more finer that way when you make like your breaded chicken and stuff like that it's a lot more easier and a lot better and it gets to the chicken a lot more better oh very good never mind but that's a little rabbit trail without the rabbit but sifting it through the sieve sift you as wheat why so that satan would have something to accuse it's like ah ah see see found something on you Again, watch out for these people who are always constantly looking for the aha. I know of many of them. I, I have known of many of them. Um, I know a, a brother of ours uh, was really, it's like, always looking for the aha. Aha, I found something. <laughs> dear, dear brother that he is, love him dearly. Don't talk to one another, of course, but he was one who was like that. He was always... Always look into, look into with the magnifying glass, you know, as we're supposed to, uh, but overdid it, okay? But see, the sifting, that he may sift you as wheat. Sift you as wheat. Uh, verses 39 on to verse 48 in Luke chapter 22 here. Verses 39 on to verse 48 here in chapter 22 here in Luke, okay? 39 on verse 48. And he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. 
and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. It was the time of Christ's departure. How did Christ finish his course? with knowing what he was going to face. Saying, if thou wilt be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. I must decrease, he must increase. Okay? And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. We've talked about this before. Um, was he actually bleeding blood? I don't know. I personally think that he was sweating profusely to the point that it was sweat, was like blood. But that, 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 see, never mind it, okay? And when he rose up from prayer... He was come to his disciples, and excuse me, and when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And said, and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Hold the place here. Go to Mark. Go to Mark, Mark chapter 14, verses 37, on to 42. Mark chapter 14, verses 37, on to verse 42. And he cometh, and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Shimon, sleepest thou? Couldst not thou watch? One hour? At, at, at the time of the end, when things are going to get their roughest. Sleep. Sleeping for sorrow? <laughs> and, and where did we leave off here? Where did we leave off? In uh, uh, where he said... Uh, Verse 45 in Luke chapter 22. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. Verse 46. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And then now go to Mark chapter 14, like we just said. Verse 37. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Shimon, sleepest thou? At a time like this? Couldst not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. <laughs> Here's for you Catholics. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is strong. But the flesh saves you. <laughs> but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed. And spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, neither wist they what to answer him. Go back to Luke chapter 22, verse 47 on uh, 48. And while he yet spake, oh, excuse me, went out of order. Go, go back to uh, Mark chapter 14. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that, brethren. I, I, there, there's a certain way we're going to read this, okay? Um, okay. All right, where did we leave off here, okay? All right. Verse 41 in Mark chapter 14. Sorry about that. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them. Oh, well, let's read verse 40 again in Mark chapter 14. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. And at a time like this, towards the end, and you're going to be sleeping... What are you going to answer the Lord? It's like, what, what, what? At this time of the end, how are you going to finish? Huh? What, do you decide to just sit there? Hmm? Waiting? 
And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And now go back to Luke chapter 22, picking up at verse 47. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before him and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? A kiss of death. And you know how they were sleeping for sorrow? Okay, you remember that? Matthew 24, just one verse in Matthew chapter 24. We, we will be getting to Matthew chapter 24 here, a, a little piece in here a little, in a little bit. But Matthew chapter 24, just one verse. Their eyes were heavy for sorrow. Matthew chapter 24, verse 8. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. What's going on right now outside your door? And how are we going to finish? First Thessalonians chapter 5. Yeah, yeah, Brad, you're going over this again? Oh, I'm in this tabernacle. It is meet to keep you in remembrance of these things. Because apparently some of you are forgetting. Apparently some of you of the church of the living God are allowing yourselves to get sidetracked. It happens. It happens. But man, gird yourself. Gird now your loins like a man. Gird your, gird your loins now like a man. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 1 on to verse 11 again. Put you, into, put you in remembrance of these things. While I am in this tabernacle. That you don't forget. Especially right now. And let these, these professionals. Professional. Want to be a professional, huh? I'm not a professional. <laughs> I'm not a professional. This is my passion, not my profession. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 on to verse 11. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know, with an E, <laughs> presently, that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in the dark, uh, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Brethren, you're not in the darkness. Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. You looking at that? Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Paul admonishes us to watch. Faith cometh by hearing, not by seeing. Yes, we're going to hear our names called. Come up hither, yes. But watch. What, you know, what's going on? You know, you know, you don't dwell on it, of course, because what can happen? You can dwell on it, and then you can get sidetracked because you see the wind boisterous, okay? But you're not supposed to be ignorant. I, that's why I'm so grateful for those of you, my brothers and sisters, uh, especially, that there are those, my brethren and sisters, who keep me in the know on things. Um, several of you do that. Thank you. I love you. Because, uh, you know, 
we every once in a while we'll listen to current events with a little radio thing but um you know i we're basically kept in the know by several brethren and a dearly dearly beloved sister who um keeps us informed on things which is which is invaluable invaluable never will we forget that kindness but okay ye are all the children of the light and the children of the day we are not of the night nor in darkness let us uh, therefore let us not sleep how long wilt thou sleep O sluggard when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep get a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the hands to sleep so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth and thine and thy want as an armed man therefore let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night but let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet the hope of salvation for god hath not appointed us to wrath the time of jacob's trouble is god's wrath but to obtain salvation by our lord jesus christ we're saved if we're absent from the body, we're present for the uh, uh, present with the Lord. But see, the redemption has yet to happen. Okay, I know some people like to get that confused. We we are saved. If we if you you know if you were to come and blow me away or something like that, this body'd be dead. I'd be with the Lord. My wife, the cysts get the best of her. That body of hers is going to be dead. But my wife is going to be with the Lord. See. Okay. But they who sleep. Remember. They sleep in the night. But no one sees apparently. Okay. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. But to obtain salvation. By our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. We're saved. Sealed unto the day of redemption. It's the redemption of the purchase possession. Okay. That's the final part of it. Okay. If we were to die, we'd be with the Lord. Okay, the obtaining salvation is referring to the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? I've heard it said you're, we're two-thirds saved. Yeah, I guess you could say it like that. But uh, like I said, if we die today of the church of the living God, we're going to be present with the Lord. It's the skin suit that's going to stay here, see, until the redemption of the purchased possession and stuff like that, Okay. What that's talking about okay for god hath not appointed us to wrath time shapes trouble but to obtain salvation by our lord jesus christ who died for us that whether we wake or sleep we should live together with him wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even also as even as also ye do yes Comfort one another. Edify one another. This is not it. Okay? This is not it. And go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. A little instruction in righteousness. You've got to remember. Okay? Matthew chapter 24 is specifically talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. But we just saw that Peter, of oh, Peter, Paul said to, for us to watch and be sober, okay? There's a difference in dispensation, but the instruction and in righteousness is there. Matthew chapter 24, verses 42 on to verse 51. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Now this is talking about his literal second coming. We're looking at this for our instruction and in righteousness. How are we going to finish? Hmm? We're going to get involved in pettiness? <laughs> Don't you realize, you twit, that these devils are rejoicing that the church of the living God has been fragmented, fragmented by man and the traditions of man. Go run along there, little boy. 
Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Be instant in season, out of season. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. You know, the, the, the Ruckman camp, uh, Robert Breaker, incidentally, um, a lot of people think that, you know, about Robert Breaker trying to give dates for the rapture. Uh, he got that from Ruckman, by the way. You want me to prove that to you? I can. I can. Email me and I'll email you the uh, PDF that someone had made and given to me, which proves Ruckman was a date setter. Oh, come on, tough guy. Come on, ask me to ask me for the information and I'll give it to you. Okay? Privately. Just you and me. Go ahead. Okay? But yeah, see, <laughs> um, Mr. Breaker is far more similar to his idol, Peter Ruckman, that people like to give him credit for. Okay? The point is, praise the Lord that we do not know when these things are going to happen. Why? Because if we knew, then you could, well, it's like, oh, okay, it's getting time to the catching away. I better shape things up. So you can live in a disingenuine, or uh, you can live not genuinely, or uh, whatever the word is. You cannot live right, you can live like a devil, and then towards the end, it's like, oh, better go ahead and clean it up now. Because you knew when it was coming. But see, be instant in season, out of season. You never know when the, your time is up. What manner of men ought we to be knowing that at any moment we could be caught up? Hmm? What manner of men, that includes mankind, okay? What manner of men ought we to be knowing that at any given moment, as healthy as you could be? What if a piano falls on your head and blah, huh? Healthy as you could be. Walking down the road and for some reason you have a heart attack. But see, if you knew ahead of time, then you could live like the devil, and then, oh, it's almost time, better get serious. <laughs> you, you, you think you're going to live your whole life as a devil, and then just like Constantine, your big buddy, uh, thinking Constantine. <laughs> and you think that on your deathbed you're going to repent, and you're going to go to heaven? <laughs> Roll up that cigarette, old boy, and smoke your life away into hell. Yeah. yeah. And while you're at it, uh, go ahead and have a few extra sips off the pint while you're at it, too. Okay? Verse 44. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as, ye th as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Now, this is specifically talking about the second coming. But Paul admonishes us to be instant in season, out of season. Okay? The teaching, the instruction of righteousness there that goes through the dispensation. Be ready. You never know when your time is up. You don't know then whether or not we're going to get caught up today. Okay? Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. See? Oh, we knew when the rapture was going to come. So, hey, let's live it up. Because, hey, we got time. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> First Timothy, 
chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. We haven't really even gotten into the, the main focal point of what we wanted, what I wanted uh, us to speak about, but <laughs> that's okay. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 11 under verse 17. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Here's my verse right here. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who they are chief. No, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might chew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. A pattern, an example of long suffering. How long suffering, how long the Lord suffered with Paul, then Saul, before he saved him. Now on to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Because, as we have talked before, who is the God of this world? The God of this world is Satan, isn't he? Yes. Yes, we know that. But now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Talking about faithful? Faithful. We're going to see how faithful some of you really are in the times coming. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. The, the God of this world is Satan. And if Satan can divert you, even for just a little, hmm? are we faithful unto the Lord? Or is our faith going to be diverted by what the devil, the little G-God of this world, shows us? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 4. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. What are you faithful to? You faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ and his word? Or are you only faithful when it suits you until the devil gets your uh, eyes away from the Lord because the winds are boisterous? Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self according to man's judgment. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. And how does the Lord judge you personally? By examining yourself daily in the scriptures. Here's how the Lord judges you. Here's, here's how the Lord judges me. Okay? Okay? Here's how the Lord judges me. The Lord judges me through the scriptures. He also uses a dear friend, my best friend, to correct me on things. Thank you for that, brother. You know as to what I speak. I love you and thank you. But see, we are to examine ourselves daily. You know, you might think what you are doing is right. You might think. Remember what our Lord says about the heart, how it's deceitful and desperately wicked and no man can know it? 
You might be thinking, I was like, well, I'm doing, a, I'm doing a good thing. I, I was right. This was right. But then you examine yourselves in the scriptures. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. That's why Paul says, I judge not my own self. I don't judge my own actions without comparing them to the scriptures. Beware of those who tell you to or teach you to have self-judgment that is void of first basing them upon Scripture. Remember, those who compare themselves among themselves are not wise. But no, that wisdom is earthly, sensual, devilish. And what we got going on right now what we got going on right now? One second, brethren. Sorry about that. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Deutero 2. Second. Second giving of the law. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now, what are we to remember here? This is for our instruction in righteousness. Deuteronomy is written unto the Jews during the dispensation of the law, which was by faith and works. Eternal security was not there. Okay? Being right with God was predicated on obedience. Okay? You did this in order to be this with God. Okay? So being right with God was predicated on obedience unto the law. Okay? Totally different dispensation. And what we are going to look at was specifically for the Jewish people when they were in the promised land, if they kept the law, they did what he, they, uh, the Lord had said for, him to, for them to do here in Deuteronomy chapter 28. You got from verses 1 on to verse uh, 13. Okay? Verses 1 on to verse... Oh, excuse me. I, I was looking at 5, 6, 7. <laughs> okay. Uh, verses 1 on to verse 14. Okay, excuse me. I was looking in the wrong chapter. But from verses 1 on to verse 14, okay, you see the blessings of obedience. But from verses 15 to the close of chapter 28, there's a whole lot that talks about what happens when they weren't obedient unto the law. Now, we have to remember that dispensationally and doctrinally, that is not how it is today. But what we are looking at today is to remind us, God has a certain way he wants things to be done. And whether you are lost or of the church of the living God, God's laws for basic things of how man ought to be with one another holds to this very day. And we got to remember, here and what we're looking at in Deuteronomy chapter 28 was specifically doctrinally for the Jewish people, okay? And this was the result of their disobedience to the law, of not doing it the way God said, okay? Doctrinally and dispensationally was different for us, okay? Today, it's different for us today. But we're looking at this because this is what our Lord did Unto his own people, the apple of his eye. And we're going to see here in Deuteronomy chapter 28 a lot of what we're seeing going on right now on a grand scope because of a nation and a world that has rejected the Lord. Okay? So, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 22 under verse 37 to start. The Lord shall smite thee with consumption and with fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew and they that and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Today, okay, this is our instruction in righteousness. Today, these people of the world want nothing to do with God. They get the steel of the Jesuit punyard that affects their uh, pineal gland, okay? Make uh, alienate, it's not the mark of the beast, making it a lot more difficult for them to be saved, okay? But 
They have chosen evil. They don't want to hear the truth. They have itching ears and they heap to themselves teachers to go ahead and scratch their ears. So, the Lord has given these people over. And we are seeing these kinds of things going on right now. A consumption, things that consume them, brought about, uh, brought about by the Jesuits. They are consumed. And they have a fever. And with an inflammation and with an extreme burning. Okay? And with mildew. And they that per, and they shall pursue thee until thou until thou perish, and the heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Won't be able to uh, sat, be satisfied by the rain that nourishes the plants or the things that come out of the earth, huh? Veganism and stuff like that, this fake food that people are offering you and stuff like that. Okay, the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. There is a famine still coming upon this land. Okay? There will be a food shortage here sooner or later. It's coming. Okay? It's coming. From heaven shall it come down upon thee. Uh, the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. Who's allowing these things to happen right now? Hmm? Satan is doing them as a means of judgment against the world, but who's allowing it to happen? The Lord will cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them, and seven ways before them, and shalt be removed into all kingdoms of the earth. Specifically, doctrinally, that is for the Jews, the diaspora. But, who is your enemy today? Rome. Rome. And Rome is smiting the world, all of you of the world. And you're spreading out because of their smiting, aren't you? Yeah. Doctrinally, dispensationally, this is specifically about the Jews. Okay? Gotta remember. Gotta remember. This is our instruction in righteousness. Let's continue, okay? And thy carcasses shall be meat unto all the fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth and no man shall fray them away the lord will smite thee with the botch the stain of egypt the thing of the world he will smite you the lord will smite thee with the botch of egypt the things of the world and with the emeralds and with the scab and with the itch whereof thou canst not be healed hmm. these uncurable diseases that exist today allowed of God, but brought about by man's disobedience unto what God said, and also by man messing with the things that God created. Hence, cancer, AIDS, AIDS, which was a man-made disease. Okay? The Lord shall smite thee with madness and sanity. <laughs> Look outside your door. How mad these people are. And blindness. And astonishment of heart. Oh yeah, people today are mad and blind. And they're astonished by what? By the things of Egypt. Why? Because their eyes are on Egypt. Not on our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our King, our Father. And thou shalt grope at noondays, and thou shalt grope at noondays, as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be open, and thou shalt be only oppressed, and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Oh, but the Savior that people are looking for today, it's not the Lord Jesus Christ, no. The Savior that they are hoping for and looking for today that one who's going to have a military campaign and have a lot of money at his disposal, as that dimwit uh, Prince Charles made mention, that man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? That's the world's savior. That's who the world is looking for. Yeah. And is not the world spoiled right now? Hmm. Thou shalt betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and shall not dwell therein. <laughs> yeah, uh, you need a marriage license to be married. Yeah, so the state is lying, you know, in your marriage. 
Okay? And thou, and thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Yes, because someone else owns your abode. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Yes, because seedlings are being bought by our uh, doing the thing of seeding and planting and farming. It's now basically in the hands of our government. Okay? All right? Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Yes. See, everything is being taken away from people and being put in the hands of the Vatican. Doctrinally and dispensationally, this was written unto the Jews, for the Jews. But we can see a type of it happening before our eyes, where Satan, through his church and her army, the Jesuit order, is taking everything away and putting it in the lap of Rome. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, the Jesuits. And today, the children are being handed over to the Jesuits. Teach us. Teach our children. Teach the children things. And what did the Jesuits say? We, we only care about the instruction of the youth. And you can see that in uh, the coadjutors because they go after the kids. Yeah. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. I remember talking to some people who feel powerless because they're, they're, you know, they can't take their kids out of school and stuff like that because the state will prosecute them and try to take their children away from them. So what happens when you give your children on to the Jesuits? The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not, a nation which thou knowest not, eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed alway. Hmm. A nation. A nation. So that thou shalt be mad and saying, for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see, the Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed. From the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head, he'll smite thee in the knees. You will bow. You will kneel before the Lord eventually. That you can't stand on your own power. Okay? The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, hmm, and thy king which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt thou serve other gods wood and stone. Specifically, doctrinally, talking about Israel, for Israel. See here in America, America is run and owned by the uh, Vatican, run by the Jesuit order, okay? The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee. Unto a nation which thou, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and where thou shalt serve other gods with stone. Okay? The Vatican has long bought America. And a god, a nation that these people don't know of, are being brought onto the Vatican to serve idols. Wood and stone. Yeah. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Now, go to Psalm 102. Psalm 102. We're going to be coming back to, uh, we're going to be coming back to this. But, Psalm 102, okay? Verses 1 unto verse 11. Again, Specifically talking about Israel, okay? Specifically talking about Israel, about how they were handed over for not being obedient unto the Lord. But let's learn a little something here, okay? God did this to the apple of his own eye when they weren't obedient unto him. Keep that in mind. Psalm 102. 
Hear my prayer, O Lord, of verses 1 on to verse 11. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call, answer me speedily. This is the cry, this will be the cry of the Jew during the time of Jacob's trouble when they realize how they have erred, okay? But for those of us to instruct us in righteousness, for those of you who are in error, those of you who are not saved, you can get woken up at any time right now. Get woken up out of your sleep. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me. In the day when I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burnt as in a hearth. Reference unto the Holocaust time, of course. Yes, but also the Holocaust that is coming. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. Bones cleaving to your skin? Mm. Famine? I am like a pelican in the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. All unclean animals. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon, my house, upon the housetop. My enemies reproach me all the day. And they that are mad against me, insane, mad me, denotes insanity, and they that are mad against me are sworn against me. You ever, how many of you have been given the opportunity to witness and preach or to guide or to be used to guide someone unto the Lord or to say a word or whatever and then those of the world get mad against you. Have you seen the insanity, the madness in some of these people when you try to witness unto them of our Lord Jesus Christ? And it says here, again, mine enemies reproach me all the day and they that are mad against me are sworn against me. Sworn enemies. Who is the sworn enemy of us today? Roman Catholicism, Satan and his church. Okay, and her, and her army, the Jesuit order. Okay, that's why you can tell these coadjutors because they get so mad against you for speaking the truth. They're sworn against us. They are sworn enemies of us. Okay, and isn't it interesting that the Jesuits take four vows. They swear against who? Against the Lord Jesus Christ. Very interesting. For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping. Verse 10. Because of thine indignation and thy wrath, for thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. Now, appropriately, Psalm 102, when the Jew realizes that they've blown it, that during the time of Jacob's trouble, when they see that man of sin, the son of perdition, come into the third rebuilt temple, this is going to be the cry of Jewry during the time of Jacob's trouble. Absolutely. Absolutely. But for today, to instruct us in a little righteousness, for you, have you been taken with the things of the world? Hmm? Hmm? Has the Lord been chastising you? Because of thine indignation and thy wrath. Now, we are not appointed unto wrath, but you lost people. God's wrath is for you if you reject the true gospel. You've heard the gospel one time, you reject it. His wrath is for you. Because of thine indignation and thy wrath, thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like a shadow that declineth. declineth. I am withered like grass. Verses 1 and verse 11 here in Psalm 102 talk about the Jews during a time when they are going to be under heavy oppression. Today, we are under heavy oppression. But see, doctrinally and dispensationally, there is a difference here. But we are looking at this because today, this world is under heavy oppression. Heavy oppression. Mine enemies reproach me all the day, and they that are mad against me are sworn against me. They are sworn against me. Who are these enemies? 
that'd be Roman Catholicism. Okay? And we, and we got to remember here, Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. These enemies that oppress us, okay? These people, these of the world, these mere men, go to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. We want verses 5 and 8. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now, this is talking about the second coming, okay? Not everybody is going to know or see or hear when we, the church of the living God, are redeemed. But at his second coming, everybody is going to see him. They're all going to see him, okay? See, the redemption of the purchased possession is just for we, the church of the living God. But at his second coming, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. Man, it's all grass, okay? And all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. Here today, gone tomorrow. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. Because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. But the word of the Lord our God shall stand forever. See, Satan gets people distracted to mind the things of the flesh. These people who are sworn against you, who are mad against you, why? Because people have taken their eyes off of Christ. People don't want the true Lord, the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. They don't want the God of the Scriptures. They want a God of their feelings. They want a God that is of men. And Satan savoreth not the things that be of God, but the things be, that be of men. And all flesh is as grass. Remember, the what does it say there? All, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. Here today, psh, gone tomorrow. And these are men, the Jesuits, that have deceived so many of you. That so many of you are being taken by their boisterous little winds that they are allowed to do. Okay? Now go back to uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 28. We are now going to pick up from verse 43 on to verse 52. 43 on to verse 52 in Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, 28. Uh, verses 43 on to verse 52. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. The stranger. Who are these strangers? Okay. Well, in context, Gentiles, but today for our instruction and in righteousness, okay? The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. Oh, I guess today's a good day to be a Catholic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And thou shalt come down very low. Yeah. Convert or die is coming. Convert to Catholicism or die. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Yeah, and right now today, because of judgment, is not Mystery Babylon the Great, the head? Don't all nations go to Roman Catholicism, to the Pope? And they are the ones that have instilled all of this for judgment, okay? Judgment against this world. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Specifically unto the Jewish people. Instruction and righteousness. This is what happens when a world rejects 
the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. I want a God of their own making. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Okay? Today, we don't need signs or wonders because the Jews require a sign. Okay? Signs and wonders are for the Jews. Okay? Well, the Greeks, the Gentiles seek after wisdom. Remember that. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with a glad heart for the abundance of all things. Yeah, how many of us take too many things for granted, right? Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. This you can see happening right now today outside your door. Doctrinally, dispensationally, yes, is for specifically for the Jews, but to instruct us in a little righteousness, to, for a little learning of things that have happened before. You see this going on right now. You see people bowing their necks to the Vatican. Yes, you do. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Rome is your enemy. It is Rome that has brought all of this about. Okay? It is Rome that is putting these dictates and mandates. It is Rome that controls the government of the United States. It is Rome that controls your government too, wherever you are. Okay? And it is Rome. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, going hungry, and in thirst, thirsty, yes, and in nakedness, and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Yeah. Yeah. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, as swift as the eagle fleeth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Now again, doctrinally and dispensationally, specifically speaking about the Jews here. Yes, they are. But, you know, how many people, did, trying to understand what Catholicism is all about, all you really need to know is that it's Satan's church. But I mean, you did, I mean, look at all that stuff. You know, all that stuff right there is all about the doctrines of Catholicism. And that's something. And that's something. Yeah. A nation of a fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favor to the young. Well, Catholicism is, you know, they go after the youth. But if you don't agree with what they teach or with what they want to do, <laughs> a nation of a fierce countenance, amen, amen. You don't go in line with what they are telling you to do today. With what they are telling you to do today is contrary to the scripture? Oh boy. Oh boy. Me and my wife have seen it. We have seen it. You have probably seen it too. I, as I understand it, in New Jersey, unless you have the steel of the Jesuit poniard, they're not going to let people into the hospitals now. Apparently. Apparently. Isn't that something? And when you want to follow the scriptures, and the scriptures is against what is going on today, oh, oh, you're going to see a nation. You're going to see a people of fierce countenance, aren't you? And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. They're taking everything away from us. The Vatican is taking everything away. You need to be saved. And that, our Lord Jesus Christ, his salvation, they can never take him away from you. Oh, they can take away all the adornments of your flesh. They can take away all your little things that Satan and his church and her army is getting you to focus on, they can take all that away from you, which they are making you to see that as the all-important thing. But no, no. You come to the Lord Jesus Christ broken and contrite. His terms and he save you. You will have a treasure. You will have the Lord within you. 
and that they can never take away from you. You know, they beat Paul, they whipped Paul, they were trying to whip the Lord out of him. Can never happen. Can never happen. You will have within you the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And there ain't nothing that the Jesuits or Satan himself can do to you that will be able to take that away. Because it's not yours to be taken away. When you come to him on his terms and he save you, you belong to him. And Satan ain't never going to be able to take that away, dear friend. Amen? And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or increase of thy kind, or flocks, or flocks of thy sheep, until he hath destroyed thee. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. A constant barrage. Constant barrage. Especially in the media. Constantly. Corona gonna get you. Corona gonna get you. Corona gonna get you. Constantly. Constant barrage. A never-ending assault. Look at these devils, how they are constantly, constantly dredging up stuff. Okay? Until thy high and fenced walls come down wherein thou trustest throughout, thy, throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And people make a high wall in their own conceit of things of the world. And the things of this world are given unto Satan, give unto whom he will choose as for judgment, okay? A lot of you have your eyes on the wrong things. And let's go to Daniel now. Daniel chapter 8. Okay, Daniel chapter 8, verses 23. Verses 23 on to verse 25. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. This is talking about that man of sin, the son of perdition, who will be revealed after we, the church of the living God, are caught up, redeemed, okay? But, okay, this is what everything is being worked for. This is what everything is being built onto that man of sin, the son of perdition, to come. Okay? That is why you are all going through this kind of stuff right now. Okay? And in the latter time of, the time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Mighty and the holy people, the Jews, okay? And through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. Come on, fingers, work with me. Okay. Revelation chapter 16. Verses 13 under verse 15. Now this is during the time of Jacob's trouble. And remember on to Catholicism. Catholicism teaches you that God is one God consisting of three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Hey, hey, you Trinitarians, you want to see the Trinity in the Scripture? Oh! Here it is. Revelation chapter 16, verses 13 on to verse 15. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. The dragon is Satan, by the way. Okay? Satan, to, to what the Catholics teach you, uh, who is God the Father. Okay? God the Son. 
the fall of the beast and the whole and the Holy Spirit, uh, the false prophet, as taught by Catholicism, God the Son, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. Scripture doesn't t talk about God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit like that in the Trinity because the Trinity is satanic blasphemy. Here's your Trinity right there. The, the Catholic Trinity, okay, is the dragon, uh, okay, is the, is the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are going to be on the earth. Three divine persons that make one God during the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, brethren, when these crazy Trinitarians like to tell you that uh, the, the Bible teaches a Trinity, you can say to them, you can legitimately say, like, you're right. And they're like, wait a minute. Whoa. <laughs> you take them to Revelation chapter 16. Take them right to Revelation chapter 16. And it's like, oh, yeah, it does. Here's your, here's, your, here's your trinity. Here's your trinity. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. There's your trinity. Okay, let's continue. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Roman Catholicism is going to be the prevailing power during the time of Jacob's trouble. And that's being established and being set up right now. Okay? And that man is in the son of perdition is going to be working within Catholicism. I still believe to this day he's going to be a pope. I believe he's going to be a Jewish pope. Absolutely. Absolutely. And of course, that, that nation that we talked about. What nation would that be? Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 6. Okay? Revelation chapter 17. Verses 1 under verse 6. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, and the waters are people. Okay? With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet red colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed with purple and scarlet color, the colors of the Vatican by the procession of the cardinals and bishops, okay? full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed, excuse me, in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. All the glamour and glitz, all the visual adornings of Catholicism, okay? Having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Rome, Roman Catholicism. And I saw the woman, Mother Church, drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Yes. 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 Roman Catholicism. See, Rome, dear friend, is making us, not us, but making some, us as man, us as man, to take our attention away from where it ought to be to have it focused on all this worldly stuff. And woe be unto you of the church of the living God, unto us of the church of the living God that get captivated and taken with their arguments to get focused on the things of the world. 
of the things of man and the traditions of man. Woe be unto us if we allow ourselves to be sidetracked in such a manner. Woe be unto us. Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6. And unto the angel of the church in Sardius write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Again, an admonition to watch. Three dispensations under the law where our Lord warned the children of Israel for the death, burial, and res resurrection under the law. In this dispensation, be instant in season, out of season. And of course, during the time of Jacob's trouble, which is all going to be about endurance and keeping an eye out for Jesus. And right here, right here. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If thou therefore, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. If you're of the church of the living God and you have gotten messed up in sin and have uh, are doing the things of the world and taking the world into your house, hmm, gotta be careful. Gotta be very careful, brethren. Thou hast a few names even in Sardius that have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. There are a few of us, few of the church and living God, who are not being taken by the things of the world, who are not giving ourselves over to the things of the world. Not that we are sinlessly perfect, absolutely not. No, 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 no. But we are not to be like that. We were rescued from that, okay? Remember Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2? Not to be conformed to this world. Okay? He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, go to Matthew chapter 24. Uh, Matthew chapter 14, excuse me. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. We want verses 22 on to verse 23. 33. Verses 22 on to verse 33. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him Onto the other side, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. So the Lord isn't with his disciples at the moment. So they think, right? But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Mm, the wind was contrary. And here's a ship in the sea being tossed by the waves, because the wind was contrary. Mm. Mm. A uh, double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let's continue. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit! And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Hey, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. After all that stuff, you know, the, the waves are roaring, the wind that was contrary, and everything was going crazy. They were scared, and here comes God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, walking 
on the water. Not to be missed, okay? Meaning the water had no effect on him. The waves and all that stuff, nothing. He just walks right over it. See, the instruction here, the teaching here is the things of the world that Satan will make you pay attention to. Our Lord just walks right over it. Okay? And he says, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Okay? And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But, when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, sink, not fall, sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Look at verse 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, the wind, the wind. Hold your place here and go to Job. Go to Job. Chapter 1. Job chapter 1. The wind boisterous. Job chapter 1. Verses 9 on to verse 12 in Job chapter 1. The, uh, the sons of God, the angels, go before the Lord in Job chapter 1. Satan comes up for him and the Lord says, uh, where are you from? Where are you coming from? And Satan says, from going up and down in the earth and walking to and fro and that kind of stuff. Covered this in the previous video, okay? And then the Lord says of uh, Job, have you considered Job? And, and the, uh, verse 8, and the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Verses 9 on to verse 12. The accuser of the brethren. The wind boisterous. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. See, Satan is accusing Job that Job only loves you because of the stuff you give him. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Satan is accusing people, the accuser of the brethren. These, these, these Christians, <laughs> they love you only because of what you give them. Let me make it bad for them. Let me take away all those things that you have given and allowed them to have. And then we're going to see what kind of meat they really are. Alas, in these days right now, at this time, brethren, how many of these Christians, of these King James Bible-believing Christians, when the rubber hits the road and Satan is allowed to sift these people, how many are really going to be standing strong for our Lord Jesus Christ? How many are going to be more concerned with man and the traditions of men and getting money out of you rather than standing strong for the Lord and getting diverted by pettiness? Satan's accusation. They love the stuff, not the one who gives the stuff. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself, but not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And then in the book of Job, four things in succession. One, two, three, four. Satan is allowed to take away from one of God's own. Okay, you look at verse, uh, what was that? Verse eight, the glowing testimony that our Lord gave of Job. Okay, 
Satan was allowed to do that. He had to get permission from God to do that. Okay? So, and one fell swoop. One, two, three, four. Right after another. One right after another. But look at verses 18 and 19. The final thing, the fourth thing that came upon Job in one day in a succession of one, two, three, four. You talk about having things put on your head. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their, in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Mm. So a great wind came, fell down upon the young men, and killed them all. A boisterous wind from the wilderness comes and takes everything away to get your eyes off of the Lord Jesus. All those succession, that one, two, three, four. And it followed, and it, the last one is a great wind. Hmm. We are not to follow every wind and slay of doctrine by the cunningness of man. Okay? Keep that in mind. Now, let's go back to our text in Matthew chapter, um, Matthew, where, where, where are we? <laughs> Matthew chapter 14, verse 30 again. Okay? And he said, come. Uh, no, verse 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Hmm. He was afraid. And beginning to sink. It didn't say that he, like, he saw the wind boisterous and was like, oh, oh, oh. slowly starting to sink. Slowly starting to sink. Proverbs 26. Not Hosea. Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs chapter 26, one verse, verse 16. That, Proverbs, uh, oh, 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 one second, brethren. I'm sorry about that, brethren. I wrote down the wrong scripture verse. Proverbs 20, uh, chapter 24, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 24, 16, okay? Now, in uh, Matthew, um, Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink, not plummet like a stone, not fall right away. Ma uh, Proverbs 20, uh, 24, verse 16, for a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Hmm. 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 And and also go now to Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. Come on. Come on. Second Timothy chapter two. Verses eleven on to verse fourteen. A just man fall a seventh seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked fall into mischief. And here, Peter began to sink when he saw the wind boisterous. Those who say they are of the church of the living God, but they're Christians, when they see the wind boisterous, how many will go psh, plummet right down to the ground, fall into mischief because they only love the Lord or pay attention to Him because they are doing well right now. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 14. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, dead to the world, we shall also live with him during the kingdom of heaven. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. It's not talking about salvation. If we deny him in our walk, he could deny us blessing, his mercy, his grace. 
Not, not salvation because it's not our salvation. When you come to the Lord Jesus Christ on his terms, he saves you. You are sealed unto the day of redemption. It's not your salvation. You're once saved, always saved. You're going to heaven no matter what. But what he can deny you is, he can deny you a blessing. He can deny you your uh, you mercy, okay? He can deny you his kindness and grace. not going to deny you salvation because it's not your salvation, okay? If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. So just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Lord, save me! Pull some out. But the wicked shall whoo, fall into mischief. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, verses 3, of course, we had to go and they had to come here. Verses uh, 3 on to verse 5. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Falling away. Hmm. Falling away. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple, sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Okay? And, and just one verse in Luke, and one verse in Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, just one verse, Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Hmm. Hmm. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Hmm. Hmm. And Satan... I beheld Satan fall, falling from heaven. Hmm. hmm. And Jude, Jude, verses 24, on to verse 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power now and ever. Amen. So him who is to keep you from falling. Hmm. And, and, and now go to Luke chapter, go back to Luke. Okay. Uh, chapter 10 again. Luke chapter 10 again. Him who is able to keep you from falling. Luke chapter 10. Now let's read verses 19 on to verse 24. In Luke chapter 10. Okay? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Because your names are written in heaven. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes, the wise and prudent in their own eyes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye see, hear and have not heard them. See, a just man will fall seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked will fall into mischief when they see the wind 
boisterous. Those who are not truly of the church of the living God. Absolute suffering reveals, dear friend. And absolute suffering reveals absolutely. Just like why we looked at a Job. See, Satan accused Job, you know, you take, take away all the blessings and he will curse you to your face. Didn't happen. Then Satan said, touch his bones and his flesh. Affect his body and he'll curse you to your face. That didn't happen. See, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 21. Seeing the wind boisterous. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 21. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Whereby we know that it is the last time. Look here online, brethren. Look outside your door. Need we say anything more, okay? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they no doubt, they would no doubt have continued with us. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. That's that seal until the day of redemption. That's that unction of the Holy One. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. So here, back in Matthew chapter 14, verse 30, but when he saw the wind boisterous, a mighty wind that knocks out the, uh, the four corners of the house and has the house fall on everything and kills everybody and kills everything, huh? He was afraid and began to sit, beginning to sink slowly. Just man fall seven times, rise it up again. Whereas Satan, who fell from heaven, goes straight down. Those who keep their eyes on the wind and not putting their eyes on Jesus. See, absolute suffering reveals absolutely. How do we deal with this, what is coming upon us? How are we going to finish? How are we going to finish, brethren? We're going to, how many of us are going to lose? Oh, so much. But see, is Satan distracting you so that you pay attention to the winds that are boisterous? How are we going to finish, brethren? How are we going to finish? You know how I want to finish? Go back to Job chapter 1. Go back to Job chapter 1. Verses 20 under verse 22. Everything that Job went through. How did he end this right here after all that he went through? And at the end of the book of Job, okay, when Job, you know, <laughs> kind of got a little puffed up towards the end. Yes, he was egged on by his friends, but he chose to get a little high and mighty of himself towards the end of the book. But what did Job say? Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. 
And after everything that he lost here in succession, one, two, three, four. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worship and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Nor charged God foolishly. Foolishly. Being, thinking, acting as if there is no God. You know, brethren, you know, like I told you, absolute suffering reveals and absolute suffering reveals absolutely. Okay? <laughs> Verse 19 in 1 John chapter 2. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Just man falls seven times and riseth up again. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Wicked shall fall into mischief. How are we going to finish? Brethren, in times that are coming this year, I believe, too, you know, there is a famine that it is slighted to happen, okay? There is a famine that's coming, okay? This is not going away. They have to continually bombard people with this psychological operation. Okay? And what is happening is that enemy that is coming against people, that is devouring everything. Okay? Getting people's attention away from where it ought to be onto the things that they are losing. How are we going to finish? How are we going to finish? How are you going to finish? How am I going to finish? See, th 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 this, this stuff, in light of eternity, what does it matter? Why right now, when people ought to be being edified and strengthened for what is coming, why are we being pulled apart by nonsense? by men, by the traditions of men and the worship of men. Why? Seeing the winds boisterous, men are lovers of their own selves. Let us run the race that is set before us, brethren. Let us be like Paul. I have finished the course. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, waiting for me a crown of righteousness that not only I'm going to get, but every single one of you who uh, loves his appearing. But it's stay the course. Now is not towards the end. Okay? Let us finish stronger than at our beginning. Get, get into the scriptures more. Because of what is coming, don't do less, do more. Be strengthened in the faith. And don't get sidetracked by boisterous winds, which are coming upon us all. Times are so hard for everybody right now, you know? People who are losing, people who have lost family, people who have lost their daughters, their sons, their brethren, their mothers, even their fathers. And in all that loss, we have to keep our eyes upon Jesus and not to get sidetracked with these things of the world, brethren. So, this was a collaborated effort with myself and a dear friend of mine, 
a dear friend of ours, a dearly beloved brother. And that's going to be it for this video. Like I said, this was a collaborative effort between myself and a dear friend of mine. And uh, that is going to be it for this video. Um, thank you for watching this. If you do, I hope, I pray that our Lord Jesus Christ be glorified and magnified in this and that you as the church of the living God are edified and encouraged and strengthened to stay the course, to not get sidetracked, to not take your attention away from Jesus, not to be diverted by the boisterous wind, that by the great wind that comes and boom, knocks out the corners of the house and it's going to fall on you. Who's going to separate us from the love of Christ? No one. And you're saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God. Doesn't matter what Satan's going to be able to do to you. They ain't going to get God out of you. That's it. <laughs> brethren, oh, brethren, pray for one another. Pray for one another. Sing hymns, sing psalms. Again, I would love to see uh, you brethren of the Church of the Living God, you know, those of you who don't upload videos, upload a video of you singing a hymn. Why not? You know, why not? Pray for one another. Ask each other, how can I pray for you, brother? Be there in whatever capacity you can be there for a brother or a sister. In whatever capacity you can be there in. And prepare yourself. Be prepared. And keep your eyes upon Jesus. Because remember, whether we're absent from the body, we're going to be present with the Lord. Okay? We have nothing to fear. But man, I want to go out right. I want to finish my course the way Paul did, fighting the good fight, keeping the faith. What about you? Lord willing, there will be another video this week. Um, Lord willing, it's all up to him. All praise and all glory goes unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. We love you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your help. <laughs> we need your prayers more so now than ever. We love you. And thank you so much for watching this if you do. And we will see you in the next video.